Happy Easter. The Lord has risen. So he did. Welcome to our uh, Easter Sunday service, second one for the weekend. We had a Good Friday service. Now we can call it Good Friday. We didn't call it that on Friday. We spoke about it differently. But now finding ourselves on the day of resurrection, now we call it Good Friday. Um, my dad always said that uh, you, sh- you shouldn't borrow something from anybody. It's not something you do. And, and I've learned the hard way. I, I should never borrow stuff from people because if I do borrow it, it normally breaks. So then I buy it to replace it. So I've bought one and I still don't have one. But then if you have to borrow something, then you, like we are Christians. We want to do everything the way Jesus does it. So if you want to borrow something, then maybe borrow like Jesus. Be like Jesus. I mean, he just borrowed the grave. He gave it back after three years. So uh, to Joseph of Arimathea, he, d- he didn't use it for that long. So if you have to borrow, give it back after three days. He didn't use it all that long. Uh, a few announcements. Um, we've got birthdays coming up this week. Melissa Jeffrey on the 2nd. Hugh Clarkston, Debbie Hodgins, and Colson Smith on the 5th, and Hannah Bloomberg on the 6th. Happy birthday to these good people. Uh, well, maybe except Colson. Happy birthday to, to these good people, and happy birthday to Colson on the 5th. Um, program for this week, prayer meeting um, would be at 1 o'clock, so we pray from home where you are. Everybody's praying together at 1 o'clock. Powerhouse back up next week, 10 o'clock, and then 11 back for our regular worship service. If you would like to send your kids to Camp Kintel this summer and would like to make use of the family discount um, that is made possible by the Maryland Vanderwood Campership Fund, please contact Vina at the office um, via email before June the 1st. She will then send the names through to Camp Kintel. um, And if your child's name is not on that list, by the cut-off date mentioned above, they will not be able to make use of this discount offered by St. Andrews. Um, there are some dates again about the photo directory. I'm busy working on that again. You have either signed up or you have received a call to sign up or you will be called soon. Um, that will be happening the week of April 9th to 13th. There's a note about the um, Wingham Right to Life, um, their dinner on May the 1st and also about the Maitland Presbyterial Spring Rally. That will be April the 10th. So let's start our worship service. Uh, We're going to start with a call to worship. Um, So uh, you can follow along on the screens, but before we do that, a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for our worship service. The tomb is empty, and darkness has lost. We dance in the light of His resurrection. No more do we have to fear. No more does worry reign. He is victorious, and so are we. Because of His victory, we are free. Christ is risen. The tomb is empty, and death has been defeated. My Redeemer lives. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much that we can be together on this special day to to celebrate this. Your resurrection. You defeating death. Thank you that the price has been paid and every debt that we ever had and might still accumulate have been settled in that endeavor. So we worship you. Because you are our Redeemer. You are our Savior. So we pray that everything we do today would be in your honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me as we sing three songs, Because He Lives, Crown Him with Many Crowns, and Cornerstone. You you can stand if you are able.
God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon.
on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but only trust in Jesus' name. invite the kids to the front for our children's time. <coughs> Happy Easter. Oh, you can sit that side. He'll make some room. I brought you guys some Easter eggs. You want an Easter egg? Yeah. You can have one. You can have one. Yes, you want one? There you go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's an Easter egg for you. An Easter egg for you. Everybody just love Easter eggs, eh? There's always treats and stuff like that. So, oh, open it up. I, I, I think I brought the wrong ones. I think these are, I think these are the ones I used at Belmore. I'm sorry. May, <laughs> there might be some of these that. Oh, they are all empty. I think I took the wrong bag. Maybe. I'm sorry about that. Are, are you a little bit, little bit disappointed? No. Very. Very. Are you not disappointed? No. Okay. They are, they are disappointed. Are you, who's disappointed? Who wanted something in there? Oh, come on. Be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Macy. You girls didn't want any treats in there? Oh, you did, huh? She's not looking. Did you want, did you want treats in there? Are you a bit disappointed? You know what? On the Sunday that Jesus rose from the dead, there was ladies that went to the grave to look for Jesus. And the grave was empty. And you know what? They were disappointed at first. Why would they be happy? They didn't know he was alive. They just knew that he wasn't there anymore. They were worried maybe somebody stole his body. So when they found the empty grave, 
they were a little bit, I'm just going to go this round, round this way, they were a little bit disappointed because it was empty. But then they figured out something else. They, they, learned, here you go, they learned that Jesus was, al was alive. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? Now, do you know why those aren't in the eggs? They are too big. You know what? That, that's the problem. Colson was trying to get one before. Yeah, I think that's a bigger egg. When we put it, it it's a, maybe, maybe they snooped you on your candy bar. Because, see, that, that's actually the thing. That's actually the thing. I couldn't put the candies in there because they were too big, for the most part, without breaking them, breaking the candy or breaking the, the egg. I think those are different eggs than the ones. But anyways, who's got the Kit Kat? It doesn't work. You see? It doesn't work. You know why the candy couldn't go in there? That egg couldn't hold it. The same thing is true for that grave. You just got a different egg. The same thing is true for the grave that Jesus was in. It just couldn't hold him. Were you still disappointed when he gave you the candy? So those ladies, what they then found was that Jesus wasn't in there because he was alive. And just like that, the disappointment was gone. And they were pretty happy. The same way you were happy when you actually learned that I do have some candy. I was just tricking you. But at first they were disappointed when it was empty. Because the grave couldn't hold Jesus. Nothing could hold him. He was going to be alive again. And then when they learned that, they were pretty happy. Gone was the disappointment. So let's pray and then thank Jesus that He is alive and that we are saved and that He loves us. Lord Jesus, thank You so much that You are alive. Thank You that the grave could not hold You. And thank You that that initial disappointment just disappeared when those people found out that You are in fact alive. Thank you that you are alive and you, that you came to save us through that. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I have the eggs back? You can have the candy. And then you can head back to your seats or downstairs, wherever you, you go. Oops. Thank you. Now, I don't really know um, what I can ever add to the message on um, Easter morning. It's, it, it's a pretty hard go for, for any pastor trying to preach on Easter Sunday. Like, w what can we add? So I, I don't know if we should just sing. Because it, the, the biggest thing that could ever happen, happened. Jesus defeated death. Like, He's risen. So... I, I, I will give it my best try, but do not get your hopes up. This is probably the toughest Sunday for every pastor to preach on because we don't have anything to add. The big showdown happened. But I will give it a try for the sake of time to just try and fill the hour. <laughs> oh, we can go over an hour. You don't have to worry. So we are busy with this series and for this whole journey all the way to this weekend, we were looking for signs on the road to Easter. Um, it's the same as when you're traveling somewhere on the road. We see all these signs on the road that tells us what to do. So we were looking for these signs on this road, this journey to Easter, that shows us toward Jesus. So the sign for today 
the day of the, the resurrection um, that we will be on the lookout for is the road work ahead sign. And you might say, what? Why that one? I guess a lot of people would have thought when we get to the end of this series, it would be road work ends or thank you sign, those signs that you get on when they are done. Like, we're done with the series. Like, road work ends, thank you, or end of construction, thank you. But this is not the case. It's, we are looking for the road work ahead sign because now our work actually starts. Jesus did his part, and now it's our turn. So, so let's turn to our scripture reading this morning. Uh, it's going to come from Matthew 28. Um, you can follow along on the screen. Uh, I, I mean, what else was it going to be? It was going to be a passage about the empty tune, right? So, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for, a, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you, so the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report, get, this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. <clears throat> so the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always the very end of the age. I said we're on the, look, the lookout for a road work ahead sign. Why? Why would we be looking for that? Have a quick look at this in the passage that, that we read. The instruction for the woman at the tomb was come and see and then go and tell. The instruction by Jesus to the rest of the disciples was, come and see, therefore go, go and tell, go share. You see, it actually never changed. There is more to it now, but it, but it never changed. The come and see never changed. What do I mean by that? From the very beginning of Jesus' time in ministry, there was always the invitation, come follow me. C come follow along. Walk with me. Live with me. Go on this journey with me. No pressure. Just hang out with me and see if you can withstand the urge 
to believe me. See if you can withstand the urge to believe in me. See if you can withstand the urge to love me. So, just, just come and see. Come follow. Come and experience who I am first. That was always the invitation, all through the New Testament, in the time of Jesus' ministry. Now, after the crucifixion and after the res resurrection, the things Jesus had to do on earth was drawing to an end. He, he showed us the Father's heart through His ministry. He, he taught us how God thinks about us. He paid for all our sins on the cross. He took our tabs and He paid for it. He conquered death. He, he took the sting out of dying. And even now, He still keeps that same invite. Come and see. But now He adds something. Go share what you have seen. Go share what you have experienced. Go share how you have experienced Me. So you see, it's, it, nothing changed. It was always come see, but now there's just a little bit more. Go share. And, and there were two instances where Jesus sent His closest disciples on a bit of a practice run. He sent out the 12, and He sent out the 72. Where He said, okay, take nothing and go and tell the people that the kingdom of God is near. Go and tell them it's, it's, it's almost happening. It's almost like a, like a practice run for them. But apart from that, throughout those three years, it was always just, come see. Just, just come. Just come with me. Come follow me. Come be with me. See who I am, what I'm about. After the res resurrection, he adds, go share. Go share what you have experienced. How you have experienced me. Everything about the resurrection is, come see, go share. So it seems like the resurrection means there is work ahead. If only we could be moved to do it. If, if, if only this could be important enough to us, for us, to actually do that work. Let, let me ask you this question. Why do roadworks start? Anybody? Why do roadworks start? Fix the problem. So what does that mean? There is a problem. The potholes are just too big. Like I, I mean... Cruise on out everywhere on all the roads as soon as winter is over. They've got specific places they go to. They've got priorities. So they go to the places where the potholes are just too big. There might be other places that have some or one. Or, but there are some places where the potholes are just too big. The bridge is in disrepair. It's, it's not safe anymore, so we need to work on this bridge, resurface it, or redo the barriers. It's this idea of this road, this particular stretch of road, is becoming too dangerous. We need to do something about it. Or if we don't do something about it now, it is going to become unsafe and dangerous. Then they send a road crew there to work on it. Now the road is getting ever more dangerous. The journey has been dangerous for a while now. Just watch the news or read the newspapers and, and, and you'll see that, that the road is getting ever more dangerous. Just look at the relationships between people. 
Look at the intolerance between people. The lack of love for each other. Look at all the wars going on currently. The road is getting dangerous. Something needs to be done. We need to do something. The road is in desperate need for repair. Jesus said, well, go and tell them then. He told his disciples, tell them about me. How you came to believe in me. You were all pretty skeptic when you started following me. Re remember we did a series on the disciples? It was called Ordinary. You don't have to be exceptional to follow Jesus. Remember that? Or to be used by Jesus? All the disciples started out as skeptics. Now Jesus tells those same skeptics, or who started out as skeptics, you've experienced me. So go and tell people what you have experienced about me and share how you went from the skeptic that you were to the follower that you are. Look at you now. The road is in desperate need for repair. So Jesus says, well, go and tell them then. You go and share my message with them. But there's something in that passage that we read that, that we shouldn't miss. The angel told the woman, Jesus is going ahead of you. Jesus will, will be going ahead. The same thing Jesus said at the table, at the dinner table with the Last Supper. What did He say? I'm going ahead to prepare. We shouldn't miss this. This seems to be the theme. Always before come see and go tell, we find I will go ahead of you. And, and it's not, not just the theme of the New Testament. It has actually always been like this. We just sometimes forget about this. In the Old Testament, this was always the case. Deuteronomy 1, The Lord your God will go before you. Psalm 139, You go before me, O Lord. Isaiah 52, For the Lord will go before you. Isaiah 45, I will go before you. To quote just a few. It, it, it was always the thing. God says, I will go before you. Now Jesus says, come see, come experience, go tell. But I'm going before you. I'm going ahead of you. There's road work to be done. The road is getting dangerous, but I will go before you. Jeepers, I will even supply the tools. Acts 1, verse 8, he says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you will be my witnesses. I will go before you. I will give you the tools. Go and share it. Fix the road. This road can be repaired. At least where we travel on it. To this day, there is nothing that can convince me that this way of life, the, the way of Jesus, isn't the best possible way to live. Go and share it. Have you ever been in a, in a tough spot in life where, where you couldn't do anything? Oh, I'm not going to ask it that way. Who haven't been in a tough spot in life yet where you couldn't do anything but declare what, I need Jesus now. You know, when we've tried everything, because we are pretty clever, like we think we can fix everything, and then you try everything, and it's just nose into a wall every time, and then in the end you just go, I need Jesus then. The only way I'm getting out of this mess is if God intervenes now. And the prayer is usually very short. That prayer normally goes like, like this. God, now you have to help. There's, there's no prayer of approach and 
It's, it's, it's short. Hands up if you haven't prayed that before. <laughs> we, we've done that. God, now you have to help. Like it's, it's, we're almost not asking. We're, we're telling him. Something moved you to at that stage declare that nothing else can make sense out of this mess. Nothing else can make anything good come from this but Jesus. Something moved you to declare that. And that something is your faith in Jesus. That something is your experience of Him working in your life, of Him leading you, of Him holding you, your experience of Him comforting you. That something is the resurrection power of Jesus at work in you. I'm not making this up. In Ephesians 1, Paul writes to the church and he says, the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is at work in each one of us who believe in Him. That is the power inside of you that moves you to say, God, now you get me out of this. It's the same power that makes you believe, yes, God is all you. You see, there is hope for this road still because of Jesus. Because of what He has done, this road can be repaired at least where we travel. So get on the road crew. We've got the tools. We've got Jesus going ahead of us. Let's start the road work. Let's make this journey other people have to travel. Make it safer. Make it better. Make it more joyful. Make it more hopeful. Make it more purposeful for them. Come see. Go tell. That's the message of the resurrection of Jesus. Come experience. Come see what I'm about. Come see what I do for you, what I did for you. Come see how I lead you. Yeah, you like it, don't you? Now go share it. Let somebody else like it too. Get on the road crew. You've seen. Now go tell. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you are the one going ahead of us. Thank you so much that you are the one that gives us the power, the, the same power that was at work when you were resurrected. Give us that power to, to work inside of us, to, to work our faith in you. Thank you that we can declare that your way of life is the best possible way. So thank you that we can live on this road, on this journey, this dangerous road, and still have joy and still have hope and never feel alone because you are with us. We get it. We, we understand it. We celebrate it. We love it. We like it. But that wasn't the only point about this. The point of all this wasn't just for us to feel safe and loved and redeemed and saved. That was included in it. But the point of this was to, after feeling like this, go and share this feeling with others. Go and share this experience with others. Let them have the same. Let the journey for them also be less dangerous. Closer to your will. With hope. With love. With your peace. You gave us the tools. The one tool, your Holy Spirit, to make us brave and bold. You give us opportunities to share this. Help us to not shy away from this. Help us to get on the road crew and do the work at hand. We've seen. Help us to go share now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
At this time, the tithes and offerings would be received. kingdom come, in helping people see your love for them. So thank you for blessing us in the first instance with enough so that we can share. Thank you for inviting us to bring these gifts. So we pray that you will bless these gifts and multiply them in your special way, but also that you will bless us for bringing them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can remain standing for our closing song, Christ is Risen.
to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the resurrection power at work within us to him to jesus christ be the glory throughout all generations forever and ever amen let's do it one two three come set your rule and reign in our hearts again in us we pray, unveil why we're made, come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls, Holy Spirit come and made us now, we are your church, we need your power. In us, we seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives for your joy and prize. To see the captives' hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor. At peace, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. We pray, revive this earth. Let the 